Hey guys, today's video is all about meditation. Uh, this is the topic that I'm most frequently asked about on Instagram and I think it's because every morning I post a video of myself doing my meditation practice and that has just uh, spurred a lot of questions about it. So I'm excited to uh, share my experience. I am by no means an expert, but I definitely have learned a few things and I'm happy to share what has worked for me and what meditation means to me and my life. So I'll start off by saying that if you're someone who is watching this video and just thinks like meditation is cool and I'm glad that it works for some of you, but you know, it's just not for me. I hear you. I was totally that person. Um, I had friends who were into meditation and I just always thought like, you know, that's awesome for you, but it's just, just not going to work for me. <laughs> like the, I'm just not cut out for it. Um, I definitely have what they call like the monkey mind. Like my brain is constantly going in circles about different thoughts. And, um, I was someone who growing up, like had so much trouble falling asleep and, letting go of thought in general. Like the idea of not having thoughts going on 24 seven, I just like couldn't even imagine what that would even feel like. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're one of those people, like I hear you and I'm here to say that like meditation is for you and actually it is more important for you to do it than probably anyone else. And I can say that from experience um, and there's all sorts of kinds of meditation. So lucky uh, for you, you can explore and see what works for you. And hey, I mean, that's if you're interested. So this is for those who are interested in learning more. And if you know, you're know you open to it, if you're ready for it. I wanted to start by just kind of defining meditation and what it is and what it isn't. I feel like there's this idea that meditation is this time where you go into this like epic Zen state where you've got no, I mean, I just talked about having no thoughts, but like that, yeah, it's like this bliss state where it's like, I have no thoughts. Like I'm just sitting like this pure Buddha in this like amazing, but no, <laughs> it's not like that most of the time. I mean, maybe if you have been meditating for decades and you know, you've done like, you know, you're, you've done the practice, you're a master, like you might have long periods of time like that. But most people who are meditating are not experiencing that. Um, meditation is actually a lot simpler and easier than you think. And actually the only way to be bad at meditation is to not do it or to judge yourself, <laughs> which we'll get to later. Um, but so meditation essentially is just the practice of following the breath. And so you get into a comfortable position and you're breathing in and out and you're putting your attention on the breath. You're practicing how to focus your attention and choose where you're putting that attention, choose where you're putting your awareness and focus. And as you're sitting there and putting your attention on your breath, as your mind wanders, which it absolutely will, you are human, I am human, our brains go places, we think things, that's why we have these brains, because they're amazing and they think things, but they're also awful and they think things. <laughs> our brain can be our best friend and most powerful serving tool, or it can be, you know, our, our worst enemy and something that holds us back and gets us sidetracked and takes our attention away from being present and focusing on what really matters and what can benefit us. So anyways, you're sitting there, you're breathing, you're trying to focus on the breath and pay attention to the feeling of the breath coming in and out. Maybe you're counting the breaths coming in and out. And then you realize, oh my gosh, here I am sitting there thinking about the fact that I have to walk my dog or that my assignment is due tomorrow or like I meant to call my mom yesterday or I wonder what I should tell this person about this thing, like whatever, your, your brain is thinking. And you realize that and you say, oh, there I am, I'm thinking, and then you say, okay, I'm gonna focus back on the breath. And, and you keep doing that over and over again for however long you've set your timer for. And that is meditation. It's just that practice of following the breath, realizing that you're caught up in thought and coming back to the breath. And that's what the practice is, is it's practicing being able to be aware of what's going on and where you're awareness is. I'm sorry, that's a lot of like meta weird. I should explain that better. But basically it's you having the consciousness of where your attention is. And so, you know, recognizing that you're having thoughts that aren't serving you and being able to separate them, learning how to let go and redirect your attention where you want it to go. And 
you're building a skill, you're building a valuable tool that you can then use in real life. And that's the point of it. It's not like, meditation is not, it's like running or training if you ever did a sport. It's like when you go to practice, practice is completely different than the game. And so when you're doing drills in practice, you're not trying to get better at those drills. You're doing drills so that you're building up a skill to then use in the game. Or if you're doing, you know, if you're running and you're doing training, like you're not doing hill workouts in order to get the best time ever on that particular hill workout. You're doing hill workouts so that when you get to a hill in a race, you're able to get up it or you have the stamina to run longer or whatever it is that you're training for. So that's what meditation is. It's training for those real life scenarios when you're feeling stressed or anxious or you're just, you know, you're all caught up in these thoughts about whatever it is and it's not benefiting you it's holding you back it's causing you pain it's causing you struggle and you need to take a break from it or you just need to let go completely it's training that skill for you to be able to set that aside and either come back to it later or let go of it completely so yeah um for me i i guess i'll give a little background now that i've given all of that little foundation um I started meditating about four years ago. I started getting interested in it um, and that was because at that time I had some friends and actually my uh, boyfriend at the time was getting into it and there was just, it was coming up in my life a little bit more and um, yeah, I just, you know, you start exploring things and I also at the time was starting to feel more anxiety. Um, I was recognizing that I was a more anxious person and some life stuff was happening that was causing me to be even more stressed than usual. So I needed it and I was recognizing that I needed it. So I started trying meditation and dabbling in it and I first started by reading the book Real Happiness by Sharon Salzberg, which if you're the type of person that likes to get a foundation for something and know like the background or the stories behind it or the science of like what is actually happening, I would really recommend that book. Um, I'm that type of person, I like to know what's going on when I'm doing something and have, you know, a, a foundation and awareness, like a, a background for it. So anyways, if that's like you, I super recommend that book, it was really awesome. Um, and it laid really good groundwork for me. So that's how I started and it was not consistent at all at the beginning. Um, I also used the app called Headspace and that's an app where it starts you off at 10 minutes. And honestly, I think that for a lot of people, it's better to even start at five um, because you wanna do something that is approachable. I started using Headspace and using that app helped me to stay accountable, which like, yes, it like probably should have, but at the beginning I was not really consistent at all. Um, and I would just, you know, before work, try and do like 10 minutes in the morning and the app really helped because I didn't really know what I was doing and because my head was still so full of thought, I wasn't at that place at where I really had the awareness to recognize when my brain was lost in thought and the app, because it's guided, would, you know, remind you to count the breaths and remind you like, check back in, are you lost in thought? If so, come back to the breath and that was helpful for me when I was first getting started. So I would recommend that. There's other apps too. I think there's one called Insight and um, yeah, there's, there's multiple apps. So if you're into that and that would be helpful for you, check it out, explore, see what works for you. But like I said, I wasn't consistent at first. I tried to be, but it just wasn't really um, at a point where I was seeing a huge benefit yet and I just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't stick. And that's okay, that, that happens for lots of people at the beginning. And um, I just kind of did it on again, off again for about a year. And then I hit a point where I was at a retreat and I, um, it was actually a retreat with Evan Rock and he and his wife, Megan, now still host retreats and they're amazing. If you have the opportunity to go, I would highly recommend going to Hawaii and staying on their amazing property and they're both beautiful people. Um, I'll stick that in the show notes, but yeah, I was on this retreat and just was re-inspired to get back into meditation and really make it a daily practice. And I did. And since then I've done it 
just about every day for like the past um, over two years, like two and a half years now. And um, yeah, it's, it's changed my life and given me such amazing tools that I use every single day and um, I'm really grateful for it. It saved my life in ways. Um, even before I was consistent with it, uh, the time when I like really noticed like, oh my gosh, this is, this is working, this is doing something for me is um, I was in bed one night and I started to have an anxiety attack um, and I'd never had one before, I'd never experienced that, but um, it was really scary and I'm so glad that I had been doing meditation because I was able to like sit up in bed and just focus on my breathing and I was able to slow my breath and just you know, reset that focus, put my attention on my breath and get out of my head and into my body. And that was, I mean, it saved me. And um, since then, it's just been the most incredible empowering tool because I was someone who grew up thinking that, you know, my brain, like basically I was kind of a victim to my brain. Like, you know, not all the time, you know, I <laughs> lived a very happy, positive thinking life but there definitely were times where anxiety would overcome me and I didn't think that I could overcome it like I didn't think that I had the ability to separate myself from the thoughts I didn't realize that I was not my thoughts that I could choose whether or not to believe and accept my thoughts that's my instant pop going off I'm cooking some sweet potatoes of course um that'll stop in a second so, um, now, today, I do anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes a day. I really try to do at least 20. Um, and if you watched my video on the silent retreat, I used to do it once a day. For a little while after the silent retreat, I was doing it twice a day. Now I've been playing around with tapping. And I've been doing like one uh, meditation sitting a day and then one tapping sitting before bed. Um, and that's been really awesome and I will definitely share more about that in a future video and blog post. But yes, meditation, um, it's funny, the longer you do it, or for me at least, the longer I do it, the more calm I feel. I think maybe that's obvious, but then like also the easier it feels to keep going. Like if I do 10 minutes, I'm really glad when that 10 minutes is up. But if I do 30, I feel like I could sit for 40. Um, so it's interesting the way that that works, but I think that's just, you know, a reminder and really just a powerful like message saying that, you know, this is working, this is changing your physiology, this is putting you into a calm state because the more you do it, the more you're able to stay in it and just kind of live from that really calm, centered, connected foundation. Um, so yeah, that's, my practice now I don't use anything um, I don't use any guided like apps or um, music or things like that um, I really think it's powerful to just recognize what you can do for yourself so what I I carry with me at all times is myself and my breath and the breath is just this amazing yeah tool that we carry with us this you know guiding light that um, we have with us at all times and it's something that is both voluntary and involuntary so that's why it's so powerful to use the breath to center yourself and ground yourself because you know it's some like our breath our heartbeat it speeds up and everything when we're stressed and anxious and if we come back to our breath and we slow our breath you know we are then taking over control of that thing that was you know subconsciously we breathe all the time it's not like if we don't think about breathing then we stop breathing like we don't thank goodness we're alive we're living here <sighs> sorry about that guys my camera died i'm really bad at keeping the battery charged um but we're back yay so anyways i was talking about the breath and basically just to bring it all home here um we have, the breath is involuntary and voluntary. And so when we bring our attention to the breath and we slow it, it sends a message to our body that we are calm and that we are safe and that everything is okay. And so it's an amazing grounding tool to bring us back to that space. 
Okay, so something that I forgot to mention that is a really, really key part of meditation is non-judgment. So when you have a thought or when you recognize that you're caught up in thought, number one, um, you don't want to judge yourself for being caught up in thought. And number two, you don't want to judge yourself for whatever those thoughts are. So rather than thinking of thoughts as like positive or negative or good or bad, the key is to just think of them as thoughts, like just neutral. They're just, they're just there. They're just thoughts. They're not part of you. They have no meaning. They have no significant, I mean, yes, they have meaning significance. And like, you can look into that later, but like ultimately as part of meditation, you don't want to judge yourself for having these thoughts. These are old patterns that are coming up. These are old habits. These are wired into your subconscious. Like um, you have you have no control over certain things that come up for you. And the control that you do have is letting go of them. So the key here is don't judge yourself. That doesn't do anything to serve you. That doesn't help anyone. That doesn't help you. That doesn't help other people. No judgment. Um, and so that's a really, really key part is being patient with yourself and kind to yourself and allowing the process and your learning to happen as it does and not judging yourself as you recognize that you're caught up in thought for like the 80th time in the past 10 minutes. That's okay. That's part of being human. That's part of this life is that thoughts happen and um, you're doing amazing work by sitting and meditating and learning how to work through them. So that is a key part. Another thing that I'll say is that when you're first starting, I really think it's important to develop consistency. I know that it said that I said it took a while for me to do that, but I really think that I would have been better off if I had done like just five minutes a day rather than 10 minutes like three times a week. I really think that making it a daily practice is really important. So if you have to start with five minutes, start with five minutes. That's amazing. That's five minutes longer than you were doing before. And um, in time, work your way up. I also will say, don't work your way up too quickly. Do five minutes a day for like a month. Do it until that feels easy and part of just like habit, like that's routine now. Then bump it up to 10 and then bump it up to 15 and then bump it up to 20. Like don't do a massive jump. It took me a while to get to 20 minutes a day and now sometimes 30 minutes. And I don't think I've ever done longer than 30 minutes. Um, no, that's a lie. One day I was having a rough day and I did like 45. <laughs> but other than that, like, you know, it's okay. It's okay to go up gradually. Like this is not a race. This is not anything that you're comparing yourself to other people about. This is your practice. This is what works best for you. So those are some of my recommendations. Um, let's see, what else could I talk to you about? In terms of types of meditation, there's like, um, there's so many. Um, so you can do research. I outlined a couple of them in my blog post and the ones that I think are uh, most worthy of discussing, they're the ones that um, I know about. Um, there's, like I said, there's like, there's so many different kinds of meditation. What I have done and practiced and what works for me is not necessarily the best kinds or what will work for you. It's just what I have experience with and so that's what I felt comfortable sharing about. Um, mindfulness meditation and Zazen meditation and Vipassana meditation are kind of, they all have similar um, foundations and they're all pretty similar. They have a lot of commonalities. If it was a Venn diagram, there would be lots of stuff overlapping. Um, but they all have different intentions and, you know, little, you know, details. But the main point is kind of what I was discussing earlier is that idea of focusing on the breath. And then from there, in all of those meditations, once you've learned to let go of the thoughts and get out of your head, you're then getting into your body. So something that I often do is a body scan. And that's when you're bringing your attention to like, every part of your body little by little and just kind of scanning through like how does my head feel today how does my face feel today how do my shoulders feel today and that that might sound like really like boring and monotonous but like it's actually really helpful like there are times where i'm like oh my shoulders are kind of like hunched i can relax them or like oh i'm holding tension in my, like right here my eyebrows and i can relax there or like you know oh i'm I've noticed that 
I start to realize that I'm stressed viscerally like I feel it in my body now before I even recognize like oh my gosh I'm I'm feeling stressed like you really start to get in touch with your body and that is incredible because our body is so smart it really knows what we need and where we're at and our body is even smarter than our mind like our brain wants to control our body but getting into your body and getting in touch with your body and just like feeling intuitively is such an incredible skill and it just makes you such a superhero so anyways that's part of um, all of those types of meditation is bringing your awareness from away from your thoughts and into your body and getting in touch with that um, so mindfulness meditation uh, Zen meditation and Vipassana and like I said, there's I don't really feel like in this video like discussing all the differences and similarities and whatever But if you're interested in that I have like a very brief description in the blog post, but you can also do some research um, and Loving kindness meditation or meta um, as it's also called meditation is also really beautiful and it's something that as I was writing the blog post and thinking about this in my practice, it's something that I do like maybe like once a week or like every other week. Um, but I really love it. And like as I was reflecting on it, I was realizing how much I love it. So I'm hoping to do it more often. But uh, loving kindness meditation is one in which you are practicing uh, cultivating unconditional love for yourself and putting those intentions and prayers for your own safety and well-being and then also extending them outward to other people and eventually to all beings and so it's really beautiful it's really powerful and amazing and just I don't know it's it's done such good things for my life so how that starts is you sit there and as you're you know setting these intentions and prayers you say for yourself first so it can be anything um, it can be like may I feel joy May I feel a sense of peace. May I feel freedom. May I be healthy. Like, you know, whatever it is that you're intending for yourself and hoping for yourself. And then you think about, you know, someone in your family or one of your best friends. So I might say, you know, may my sister Casey, like, may Casey be healthy. May Casey be free. May Casey feel peace. May Casey feel loved. Like, you know, whatever it is. May Casey know her worth. You know, whatever it is that we're putting that intention out. And then we extend it to someone that we just kind of know as an acquaintance or that we bump into regularly. Like, you know, for me, it might be like one of the farmers at the farmer's market. I don't know their life. I don't really know them that well. I say hi to them every week, but we're not like close. I don't know the intimate details of their life, but you know, you extend it to that person. And then you extend it to strangers. So you just, you know, you don't have to have someone in mind for that, or maybe you do, maybe you saw someone on the street today that, you know, you just happened to notice whether you liked their hat or whether you noticed that they looked a little bit sad or whatever it is, you extend it to strangers and then all beings. And you do that, you know, every step and it really is powerful um, and a really good thing to do is to think of someone that you are frustrated with or annoyed with or someone who you just think is a terrible person and extend those thoughts to them too because that is ultimately what unconditional love and radical acceptance are all about is holding that space for someone and wishing the best for them regardless of the way that they're acting and um, you know potentially doing things that you don't agree with but holding that for them anyways. And so I think that's something that could really benefit this world today. Um, it's something that I think has been really helpful for me during these divisive times. And so I would really recommend that practice. Um, guided meditations are also kind of popular. And for me, um, you know, they're just, there's not in general my thing. I've had a couple of experiences that I really enjoyed, but for the most part, um, I really prefer to just be on my own connecting with myself and um, bringing my attention and awareness into my body and focusing within internally. That for me has been the most beneficial and helpful so far. And there have been, there's one <laughs> guided meditation that my friend Brandolyn did with me. Um, and actually my friend JD also had an amazing guided meditation that she did for me one time. So there definitely have been times where people have 
done guided meditations that have been really helpful but so far it's not um, my favorite thing but I'm not um, like setting it off to say like I'll never do that but right now it's not a regular thing for me but hey it could be for you so try it and see if you like it okay I think that's it I think that's all that I really have to say about this right now um, I hope that it was helpful I hope that you learned something new or gained some valuable insight or maybe are inspired to try it yourself if you have any questions about meditation please leave me a comment and give this video a thumbs up and all of that good stuff <laughs> and um, I can't wait to talk with you I will be answering comments so please ask any questions I'm really happy and excited to share any information that I can with you because this has been such a valuable tool for me and I just want as many people as possible to bring it into their life so um that's it for now and yeah i look forward to talking to you again soon about more things bye friends